on the UAT News, we'll be talking about evidence-based practice in nursing and why it is so important to the welfare of our patients. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the term evidence-based practice, or EBP, it can be defined as the conscientious, explicit, and judicious use of the current best evidence in making decisions about the care of individual patients. Today, I will be talking to two nurses, Laura, a recently retired nurse with over 50 years experience, and Amy, a recent grad from UOIT. We will be able to see the vast differences which have changed nursing over the last 50 years. Laura Lazelle has been nursing for over 50 years. She's worked in different areas, but retired on maternal child care. So, can you please tell the viewers a little bit about what it was like when you graduated in 1960? Sure. When I was a new grad, things were way different. We didn't have to use all that hand wash stuff. We used to smoke right inside the hospital. Patients could smoke, doctors could smoke, nurses could smoke. It was very different. I worked in a lot of different areas. We used to tell pregnant moms that it was okay to drink alcohol in moderation. And for morning sickness, there was a drug called thalidomide which is no longer on the market. We used to encourage the use of formula only and advocated for infants to sleep on their bellies. Wow. Well, as you can see, many of the practices Laura just mentioned have been studied and improved and recommendations have been made using evidence-based practice. To compare, I will now introduce you to Amy McGrath, a new grad nurse from UIT also practicing maternal child care. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. I spoke earlier with a retired nurse about some of the practices that used to be in place. Um, can you tell me a bit about the guidelines surrounding being in the hospital today? Yes. We currently have the infection control area of the hospital, which ensures that the staff perform hand hygiene before and after all patient care. This includes washing hands and using alcohol-based hand sanitizers. There is also legislation in effect which forbids smoking within 10 meters of the hospital. These guidelines are put in place for the safety of the patient and are based on evidence-based research. Excellent. Um, can you tell me a bit of the change research in regards to maternal child care? Yes. We now know that breastfeeding is the best choice for infants due to the antibodies, so we avoid using formula when possible. We also encourage mothers to have their babies sleep on their backs, as evidence has found that this reduces the amount of sudden infant death syndrome by 80%. Wonderful. So, as you can see, evidence-based practice affects all nurses. It shapes the care we provide and the treatments available. EBP has enabled clinicians to make changes to treatments in order to give patients the best health outcomes. Evidence-based practice encourages critical thinking and ensures patient safety. Now to Jim for the news.